One of the most common graphs that we come across in the photoelectric effect is the graph of kinetic energy against frequency. And what we can see here is we can see that the graph starts out negative as the frequency increases and then eventually becomes positive and continues to increase with the frequency. Now what's important here is that we can use this formula to determine what the x and y intercepts of this graph mean. And the first one, to determine what the y intercept of this graph means, we rewrite this formula by saying the energy of a photon is the product of Planck's constant and frequency, and that's equal to the work function plus the kinetic energy. This is the y intercept, which means at this point the frequency must be equal to zero, which means that zero is equal to the sum of work function and kinetic energy, which then can be rewritten as the work function is equal to negative kinetic energy. And this is when frequency is zero. So that tells us that the y-intercept on this graph is the negative work function. The second intercept that we would want to find here is the intercept with the x-axis. We know that that is going to happen when the kinetic energy is equal to zero and we get this by rewriting this equation where the energy of the photon is a product of Planck's constant and frequency. The work function is the product of Planck's constant and the threshold frequency and in this case the kinetic energy is now zero and so we can then rewrite this or simplify it. Let me write that or leave that as kinetic energy which leaves us with h times f is equal to h times f0, which then simply tells us that the frequency at the point where kinetic energy is zero is our threshold frequency. So what this tells us is that we now have a graph that can tell us where the work function is or what the work function is. It can also tell us what the threshold frequency is. And now this graph makes more sense because it tells us that when the photons have an energy or a frequency less than the threshold frequency, there is no kinetic energy because there are no photoelectrons ejected. We know that once the threshold frequency is surpassed, then the kinetic energy of those photoelectrons increases, and it increases with a steady gradient. And the gradient of that graph is kinetic energy over frequency, which we know then is Planck's constant, a constant value for a constant gradient on that graph. The second common use of the photoelectric effect or the way that we show it is in an electric circuit that's set up as follows. We have a battery connected to an ammeter connected to a photocell that we can see here essentially breaks the surface where we have a metal over here connected to the negative terminal of the battery and here a metal connected to the positive terminal of the battery. And what we can see here is that by shining a light onto this metal, if the frequency of the light exceeds the threshold frequency, then electrons will be ejected from the surface of this metal and be attracted towards the positive terminal of the battery, which would then register a current on this ammeter. So the first graph that we can draw here is a graph of current versus frequency and what this shows us is that no current would register until the point where we reach our threshold frequency and from then onwards a current would register because now electrons are being allowed to bridge that gap which completes the circuit and allows a current to flow. The circuit can also be used to demonstrate the fact that intensity changes the number of electrons that are ejected because what we will find here is that if instead of plotting current versus frequency, we now plot current versus intensity, we'll find that as we increase the intensity of this light, we increase the number of electrons that are ejected, and more electrons being ejected means more charge moving across that gap. More charge, we know, would increase the amount of current because current is the charge over the amount of time. So what we find is that our current versus intensity graph will increase for as long as the intensity increases. Again, 
as long as the frequency exceeds the threshold frequency. So once again, these are two different ways in which we can see the photoelectric effect, but both of them show us the same thing. They say that no photoelectrons are ejected until the threshold frequency is surpassed. They tell us that the kinetic energy increases once the threshold frequency is surpassed, and they tell us that the intensity affects only the number of electrons ejected. It does not affect whether or not an electron is ejected as a photoelectron.